I, I have nothing. I have no clothes. Um, my books are all gone. I need some help getting reorganized, regroup, figure out how to go on. I, I don't even know what to ask for for help. I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I do need help. I don't know what to say. When I use it formally as Martha Ann Francisco Vallejo Gedigan. I am a Californian. I was born in San Francisco, raised in Menlo Park, went to Menlo Atherton High School, went down south to Macklin Hart College and back to St. Mary's College. Um, I feel that I have been in the last 10 years holder of the candle for my family's history. My great-great-grandfather is General Mariano Guadalupe Vallejo. His father came in 1769 to California. And so my family has been there ever since then. I did music and theater all my life until my dad passed away. When I moved to Sonoma, I decided to do music and theater with California history. I have been working on and dedicating my life to California history and the women of the ONS expedition, history of the Southern Patwin Suisum, and also the family of the Vallejos. I have moved 12 years ago to a little place, more than 60 acres, in Pope Valley, California, where I had a three-bedroom and the double wide that I had over the years since I decided to do history collected hundreds of California books working on the research and on the Native Americans. I do programs on California history also, costuming um, the people that are in it and using Francisco Vallejo's music to tell the story. I'm in the middle of telling the story of the birthday of San Francisco, and the second on the expedition came up with my ancestors and founded the Presidio of San Francisco. The musicians we're using are in Santa Barbara, and since of this horrible epidemic happened, we're doing a virtual program. So I had intended to come down to Santa Barbara to rehearse with the musicians and bring the two soldado costumes I had for them. I was going to leave Thursday the 20th. On August 19th, we had a warning to be ready for evacuation where I live. I've been through three other big, big fires where the flames actually came very, very close. We've never had to totally evacuate. We had a huge fire road behind the vineyards, and the vineyards, of course, are irrigated and green. But that day, on the 19th, around 10, 30, 11, I was the only one way out on my property, um, getting ready. I was working on the program and getting ready to come down to San to Barbara. I had packed, started packing the car just in case it went to evacuation. And I had put big bins of Southern Patlin Suison notes in the car. Then. I started packing things for the rehearsal. And about 10, 30, 11, a sheriff came whoop, 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 whooping out. And he said, oh, you're out here. And we looked around. We sat and talked. I was gathering tomatoes. We saw the smoke to the north ridges, ridges away. And we saw smoke to the south. Those were ridges away also. I had been watching them all night. And I told him, he said, are you staying? And I said, well, I'm leaving tomorrow for Santa Barbara for you know, a program. He said, maybe you should think about going now. Um, the wind was really, really blowing. He said, but it's, those things are far away. So I decided to leave. Um, actually, he gave me about 15 minutes. So I finished packing the car with my purse and my clarinets and just things that I thought I'd be back in a couple of days. This was no big deal. I had put through a bag and a couple pairs of sweats and a shirt, and I jumped in the car and left. 
about three hours later about San Miguel, I called the vineyard manager because I hadn't told him that I was leaving a day early. He keeps an eye on the place. And to my horror, he said, Martha, your house is burned totally to the ground. I had to pull off the road and scream. He, I said, what, what, are you joking with me? He said, no, your house is gone. Everything in your house is gone. There's nothing left. And so I sat there for a while thinking, oh my, what am I, what am I going to do? My whole life was there, my research, my, and even my clothes, my, when I give lectures or I do things. He said the shed was still standing. I thought, well, maybe that I had the bins of the costume in the shed. Um, they were all out there. Um, so, so I continued down to Santa Barbara, started calling people. And I just said, my, my house is burned. And we, we went on with the rehearsal. And then I, had, I came back up to Pope Valley. You could only get in. It was, Pope Valley was closed off. Silverado Trail, nobody was allowed in um, because of the huge fires. And apparently, an ember had caught my house. It was the only one that caught fire. The sheriff led me up um, to the property, and he gave me 20 minutes to look at it. And so um, I had had a fireproof safe with some documents, and General Valeo was ringing it. Um, found the safe, put it in the car, had to go meet the sheriff. Took the safe to a locksmith. He opened it and it was all ashes. He's nothing. Um, except when I sieved through it with my fingers, I found the ring. But it's, uh, I don't have to go to a conservator to see if the daguerreotype and things are left. The next day, the owner of the property and I drove up. He had a special agricultural thing. And I had three hours to look through things. But there was nothing. All my English, China, everything was melted or cracked. And so um, there was nothing to rescue. So um, I came back to Santa Barbara, staying with my boyfriend, David Martinez. Um, so working on the program for September 17th, which will be virtually at noon. That is the only thing that's keeping me sane. I can't even imagine that there's nothing there. Um, no research, no books. I had hundreds of books. All of Francisco Vallejo's music collection, which I copied and cataloged into big binders and hadn't digitized yet. Those are all gone. Um, I keep saying my life, as I knew it, as I've really developed, worked on. 